Had as his guest Hulk Hogan and Mr. T then promoting one of their matches. Richard traded light banter with Hogan and Mr. T. Apparently they didn't appreciate Belzer's wit. Suddenly Hogan put Richard into a sleeper hold, picked up Richard, and then tossed him to the ground. Think wrestling's fake? Uh-uh. Richard Belzer spent time in a hospital, suffered a lacerated skull, also suffered some permanent spinal injury. He sued both Hogan and Mr. T, but before the case went to trial, they settled the case out of court. Today, why Richard Belzer doesn't think Hulk Hogan is such a great guy. And Mr. T, by the way, will not win any Lifetime Achievement Awards either, with a man they once called Koozie Belzer in Bridgeport, Connecticut, 25 years ago because of his basketball dribbling, and he's still dribbling these days. But you know, Richard Belzer on Sportsbook. Later, he is one of the most intense coaches in professional basketball. His story is inspiring, and it's also chilling. How the muscle man of Minnesota, Bill Musselman, purged his haunting incident to bounce back in basketball. Then it's Horo, Howard Rosenberg on the NCAA on CBS, and the cliches that drive him crazy. But first here is Richard Belzer. Good to see you, Richard. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. This, uh, this Congratulations, by the way, yes, on your we, new baby. We had a baby on uh, last Friday night. What and position? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's going to be a point guard, point guard, <laughs> point forward. Angel Kira, all seven, seven pounds, 11 ounces. Mm. So, well, 7 11. 7 11, that's right. He's got a little, already got, got something built in. Um, I want to ask you about this thing at the top, this, this incident. Now, people played it up for laps on the, on the circuit for a while. They said, uh, this was all kind of pre planned. You guys all had it in. Right. It was I all wish. publicity. Not, not so, huh? No, as a matter of fact, Bill Cosby said, I saw him in the Letterman show uh, right after this happened. He goes, oh, you're doing a little trick, aren't you? Playing? And I showed him the scar and everything. It was, it was no joke, and uh, I wouldn't do it again in any form or fashion, either fake or real. It was just it was a weird thing. I had my own talk show, and you don't expect to be injured on your show, do <laughs> no. you? Okay, I mean, you've had great athletes on, boxers, all kinds of people, physical people. So I had this show, Hot Properties, and someone who worked for me said, uh, this is the first year of WrestleMania, so they're going on this big publicity blitzkrieg. And that's an apt word, I can yes, assure you. I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and they said, uh, we can get Hulk Hogan and Mr. T on this show. I said, great, because mm, I didn't really care. But they said, but it'd be good for ratings. They said, fine. You know, so ratings are everything. So the, w the day of the show, like three or four hours before the show, someone who worked for Mr. T calls my office and says, uh, Mr. Belzer, Mr. T will not do the show unless there are 50 children in the audience. And some of them crippled. So wait a minute. You want me to get some kids and cripple some of them and bring them to the house? What do you mean? <laughs> he said, no, no, we did. He, he wants kids in the audience. I said, well, it's three hours before the show. I said, well, I'm sorry, that's what he wants. So, all right, all right. So I call my staff and I said, we got to get some kids here today. And what are we going to do? I said, well, just go to some school with a school bus. When the kids come out, sedate them, you know, put Hot Properties <laughs> t-shirts on them and get them on the bus. Bring them out Yeah, right. so we went to this school like Our Lady of the Connecticut Turnpike, you know, some school. <laughs> and we got the kids there. And we actually got like, you know, 45 kids, none of them were, uh, you know, injured, but so they're in the audience, t-shirts on, and then like an hour before the show, I'm in makeup, as you know, you have to be made up before you exist on television, yes. being made up, and this woman who I spoke to on the phone who works for Mr. T comes into the makeup room and says, uh, Mr. Belzer, we're kind of walking on eggshells, on eggshells around Mr. T today, because he's in a bad mood. And he's in a bad mood. Ethiopia's in a bad mood. He wasn't, a, he wasn't on the A-team. He'd be doing 30 minutes for a man, so he's in a bad mood. To myself, I said that. To yourself. Yeah, right. <laughs> Out loud, I said, okay, we'll be very nice. <laughs> so, like, 45 minutes later, Mr. T does, in fact, show up. Now, he's got, you know how he dresses. He had, like, a track suit on, gold chain. Right. And he had this baton with a spring in the middle that he was pumping. And he came in with a... Now, I don't know what genetic experiment went awry here, but <laughs> this guy is not of this earth. He's the most imposing, scary... I mean... I know a lot of people. This guy's just a scary, menacing type of person. And I, you know, I try to be nice. Oh, Mr. T, how you doing? Welcome to the show. And I, I couldn't understand what he was saying. Finally, through his interpreters, I realized that he was saying, where's my dressing room? Where's my dressing room? And I said, oh, it's back there. So he goes back to his dressing room, pumping the thing. I'm sure he'd been a big fan of yours, by the way. You had a long yeah, track right. record. Yeah, right. He knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> we used to do a double in the mountains. So, <laughs> T and bells. Right. So, um, bells and T. So then, like, about 20 minutes later, Hulk Hogan comes in. Now, Hulk Hogan, can I stand up here for Sure, a you can do it. Hulk Ooh, Hogan is uh, six foot eight or six nine. He weighs 329 pounds. I'm six one. I weigh 150. Right. Newsweek magazine called me the pencil arm comedian, so I'll be subscribed. <laughs> now, Hogan walks in like, like he just sat on a rhino. You know, it's like he has so many steroids <laughs> that he's, like, perverted the very idea of what it is to be human. You know, it's like Macy's Day Parade. He just came out like this. And I'm, and he comes over to me, grabs my hand, and he goes, How you doing, dude? You're a real funny dude. I like you, dude. You're a real funny dude. I like you, dude. And what do I have a hat on to land in Colorado? Dude, to myself, I said that. I'll lie, I said that. 
By the way, yes. you know, we, we actually have the clip of it again. The way it played on the air. Let's run that, and then we'll talk about sure. it, what was going through your mind when it happened, okay? Uh -huh. This is the way it appeared in March of 85. All right. Now, the first thing you need to know about amateur wrestling... Yes? ...or professional wrestling... <laughs> Listen, hold, you just tell me, brother, when you want him to quit squealing, okay? All right. It's called a front chin lock. <laughs> How about it, T? Keep him like that for a little while. Because... <laughs> he's all right. He's just sleeping. He's sleeping. Really, that's, I, was, I was a sleeper hole. He'd be all right. He's waking up now. That was a serious... Right, a lot of people... See, it works. All right, brother. <laughs> and now, we'll be right back after this word from you know who. Oof. Now that was no no play. I mean, there was no put on there. You Not that was all. blood behind. Well, let's take a look. We'll narrate this now. You tell us what what, what you were feeling like. Well, this it. is like the time I got shot by Hinckley. You want me to go over again? <laughs> no, really. All right. This, the, what, See, what, the what thing is, he said, here? "Signal me if it hurts." Right? Yeah. So I tried to signal. He ignored it. Like right this. now here, I'm trying to signal, but I'm, I have no strength here. My arm, I'm limp. I'm gone. Boom. See, he cut. You, when you cut off the carotid artery, the blood to the brain, you go. Your brain goes check, please, because you know your brain needs. Oxygen. Well, we're weird humans. We need oxygen. Yeah. So I was unconscious while I was in his arms. Now he's not a wrestler because he left Harvard Divinity School. You know, he's not a bright woman. So what does he do? He takes his arm away, and as you could see, I fell of my own weight hit the back of my head. Now, I jumped up and said, we'll be right back. Yeah. My doctor said, I don't know how you were in shock. How did you do that? I said, show business is not only in my blood, it's on my jacket, it's on the floor. <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't know how I did that. By the way, Lou Albano, uh, Captain Lou. Uh, he, and we have a mutual friend, Lou and I. Yes, yeah, uh, who would that be? Cindy, Cindy Lauper. Lauper. you just did a film with Cindy yeah. Lauper. But he was on the show, and he talked about the... Not with me. Yeah. On this show. Right. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant on my show. Right, right. <laughs> the showmanship of professional wrestlers, the fact that they're athletes and they're show people. This is what he said back then. Uh, as I said, I believe in professional wrestlers are without a doubt some of the finest athletes in the world, but we will understand that there is showmanship involved while they are great fine athletes. But this, as we said before, was no show. Now, you must have had some major resentment towards a guy that could have killed you. I mean, he came, yeah, he came very close to killing me. I was told by sports medicine experts that if I had fallen a few inches either way I could be crippled for life I could have been dead it's like a building coming up and hitting you in the head when you when you fall a dead weight like that and you I settled, sued you settled out of court well I sued them and it took years uh, I had a, in America's a weird place I mean I'm not going to live in anywhere else but the judicial system he you saw what he did on live television right I think I take the tape with my lawyer I go to the judge I say bad five million you know what <laughs> No. His lawyer, I sued Mr. T, I sued Hulk Hogan, I sued Vince McMahon, I sued the World Wrestling Federation. I sued them all. And they, every one of their lawyers got to depose me. So for hours, for like three or four days, six, seven hours a day, they asked me questions like, did you smoke marijuana in 1953? I think I did. You know, <laughs> did your wife pose nude for Playboy? Did yours? Answer the question. You know, it's like they asked these questions that had nothing to do with what happened. So the trial was set for January 2nd, 1990. On December 29th, the last working day of the decade, my lawyers and his lawyers got together, or their lawyers, and uh, they made an offer that I couldn't refuse. It would have been a hell of a court, court appearance for all of it. You're going to have guys, guys with feathers and stuff. It would have been wild. It would have been wild because the press pool had applied to have cameras there, so they, it would have been it would have been something maybe wanted to televise. Them, but everything worked out just fine. We'll come back more with the guy they once called... Cousy Belzer in Connecticut. We'll talk about that. The early days of Richard Belzer as a basketball star. After.